Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for this lightning talk. I'm Matt Shumpert, and this is Evgeny Lazin, and we're going to talk about tiered storage in Red Panda. First, a little bit about us. So I'm the head of product for Core here at Red Panda, and Evgeny is one of our senior software engineers in the Core who's been working on tiered storage since the very beginning. We've both also been aware of Apache Kafka since the very beginning, which goes way back to 2011 now. I attended the first presentation of Kafka, and Evgeny read the white paper back in 2011. So we've both been pretty familiar with streaming for quite a while. Uh, so let's get started and dig into tiered storage. So first up, let's level set. Um, Red Panda has been talking about using cloud object storage for a little while now, but traditional Kafka users may not be so familiar with this concept. Uh, while cloud storage has been around for a while and obviously has a lot of benefits, when it comes to streaming where you're doing these fairly low latency, near real time kind of uh, mission critical workloads where the sensitivity to you know, access to storage and the performance of storage is very high, you don't see a lot of usage of cloud object storage traditionally. So since I was familiar with Kafka since 2011, it's been all about sort of big locally attached storage volumes uh, for you know, very, very high performance in, in accessing data. And yet it's very expensive, particularly in the cloud. So how do we get the best of both worlds, right? And I'd like again to talk a little bit about how Red Panda customers can take advantage of the benefits of cloud storage without making any sacrifices around performance. Evgeny? Thank you, Matt. Uh, it will be my pleasure. Uh, so uh, generally, Repanda tier storage is uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, we have local data set, which is stored on disk and uh, uploaded to the uh, cloud storage uh, asynchronously and periodically. And uh, <clears throat> in the cloud storage, we have data which co contribute to our uh, code set, code data set. And this data can be downloaded on demand when, when it's needed the most. But most of the time, it can be just stored in the cloud without taking up some space on disks. And uh, yeah, uh, it sounds uh, relatively simple like that, but we have some secret sauce and um, different mechanisms that make it more efficient than usual. So <clears throat> first, first of all, uh, the upload path is uh, code path is asynchronous, and uh, this doesn't mean that we don't block producers or consumers when we upload something. And uh, we also are not affecting performance pretty much at all. And uh, this is because we uh, we optimized uh, this code very well. Uh, we are using the direct I/O and uh, zero copy mechanisms to do this. And uh, we also don't interact with under batch cache. So the cache can be evicted because we just upload something. And um, also Repanda uses two levels of indexing. So first level is uh, uh, coarse grained uh, index of uploaded segments. Every time we upload something, we replicate uh, metadata about this upload between all the nodes uh, which uh, joined in, in, in the same RAP group. And the data is stored in the same log as the data which user produces. So <clears throat> this may, makes the content of the bucket self-sufficient and uh, kind of self-descriptive. We also have a fine-grained index, uh, which, is, which contains information about the data inside individual segments. This uh, index is built on the fly, but the segment is downloaded to the local storage. It's uh, very fast and it's uh, columnar, compressed, and um, many other things. And uh, on the read pass, we are using uh, the disk back cache, which allows us to basically decouple our downloads uh, from S3, from the behavior of the Kafka client. So we can download in optimal way. And uh, this basically improves uh, throughput and uh, saves money on uh, requests and uh, egress. So it seems like it's really about this decoupling of the client behavior with our management of the data. You know, they don't share memory. You don't have to go back to S3 every time a client requests some data. They're really completely decoupled. And so this kind of insulates you a lot from the impact uh, to latency that you would have and also uh, the cost that you'd have from going back and forth to cloud storage every time you want to read some messages. Is that right? 
Uh, yes, this is correct. Okay. And then you talked a little bit about portability or self-sufficient topics. Um, I think we've really designed tiered storage with the future in mind and a, and a longer term roadmap in mind. Can you talk about some of the underlying mechanisms that we built into the design to enable you know, additional future capabilities? Uh, of course. So uh, we built several mechanisms that can be used together to create different features. So for instance, uh, this portable data format allowed us to create uh, read replicas feature and uh, will allow us to implement uh, disaster, full disaster recovery in the future. And uh, we also have a mechanism that allows us to quickly hydrate a partition when we have data in the cloud uh, without actually downloading the data. We can just uh, create an empty partition, configure it uh, in some way, and it will be able to, to see this data in the cloud. And uh, this allows us to lower RPO um, for recovery a lot. And uh, we also created uh, added uh, recoverness to Red Panda. And uh, in conjunction with uh, tiered storage, it allows us to implement these stretch clusters uh, in which uh, nodes can live in different regions. And uh, we can optimize data transfers using, uh, using the cloud. So instead of moving data around, we can just download it from, from the cloud on demand. OK, so the portable self-sufficient or self-contained format, flash hydration, and rack awareness, these are the mechanisms, right? But these mechanisms are going to empower us to build out a set of features as we go forward. So they enable the current feature set, but also these future features. So right now, you have individual topic recovery that you can do. But what we're looking at adding is a push button instant disaster recovery feature for an entire cluster. All the metadata offsets everything you need to get back up and running instantaneously without having to rehydrate all the data, as Evgeny mentioned, just create empty partitions, start streaming data out of the cloud storage. And that means you don't have to set up a separate cluster that's active, uh, passive, but continuously replicating and you know churning through compute and storage and costing you twice as much with something like Mirror Maker 2. So we can really enable very, very close to zero RPO and very, very low cost sort of disaster recovery posture at the same time, right? Uh, thanks to being able to do this, this uh, fast rehydration. Similarly, with the fast rehydration and having everything self-contained in S3, you can very easily up and down scale. It's kind of very freeing. You can say, no, the data's checkpointed. I can decommission a broker immediately without draining the data out, or I can add capacity whenever I need to without hydrating everything. And we know exactly where we are in terms of having the consistent data set there. And that allows us to you know, upscale, downscale easily, more quickly, and even build in auto scaling features and things like that in the future. And then finally, the cost optimization, uh, if getting touched on this about reading, you know, uh, doing transfers efficiently, uh, we can basically teach Red Panda about the cost of the cluster topology. So we have racks, but these racks and cloud represent availability zones, regions, and there's cost to moving data back and forth across them. Customers want stretch clusters so they can have redundancy uh, across geographies and AZs as they you know, sometimes go down, but they don't want to pay the cost of moving data back and forth. And so the best of both worlds is to say, this is an expensive read. I'm actually better off doing this out of S3 if all I'm doing is just up replicating to get to 3x replication on the new partition or something of that nature that's not as latency sensitive. So we can make intelligent decisions by teaching Red Panda about the cost implications uh, of their topology and then leveraging this ability for the end the storage engine optimize the read side. So down to the bottom line, what are the actual benefits customers see both now and in the future? First, massive TCO reductions. The combination of our faster throughput, higher throughput than Kafka, and the use of tiered storage universally got a customer uh, to reduce their cloud infra spend by 17x, 1.7 million down to 100K. But it also enables us to do uh, more with the data. So this sort of why not analytics approach where you do lots of data science use cases uh, that you may think of on the fly without impacting production, or maybe you respond to a request for a compliance report that requires you to read through a bunch of data. Both of these you'll hear about in the next talk about remote read replicas coming up right after this. And of course, there's data safety. We have already seen customers who've saved themselves by having the data self-contained in the cloud storage bucket. If there's a problem with their cloud infrastructure, maybe they didn't have a multi-AZ cluster or there was some human error and for some reason they lost part or even all of their cluster, the data is right there in the cloud and it can be recovered. Soon, these benefits are gonna be expanded and, and easier to use with push button, ultra low cost, 
uh, instantaneous disaster recovery of an entire cluster. I mentioned using the active passive approach where the second cluster just comes up on demand, but you still have a very low RPO, right? And it's across the whole cluster with all the metadata, not just per topic. And then also being able to scale to meet demand, obviously the benefits there are that you can kind of size your cluster just in time. You don't have to plan for peak load months out or years in advance. You can scale up your cluster without any performance degradation observed by the consumers by adding new brokers uh, very, very quickly and getting them online very, very quickly. So there's not this delay, right? And then finally, optimizing the data for downstream use cases. And Alex's keynote, he talked a little bit about how tiered storage and this sort of cloud first storage approach really frees us architecturally uh, to be able to think uh, you know, bigger and to be able to uh, add use cases very easily. And these could be a variety of different types of analytical use cases. So without sort of divulging too much, you can prepare the data for these downstream use cases uh, that weren't necessarily envisioned when the cluster was first created or when the data was first written. So these are lots of very sort of transformational advantages that customers get in terms of, of course, TCO, but also their agility. So thanks for watching the talk today. Again, the next talk coming up is about remote read replicas. Really appreciate your time and enjoy the rest of the open house.